and Homecoming. It was a good film. Oh boy, here we go. We're going in. We're going in. Turn that shit up. See if we can get a uh, higher quality here real quickly. Yeah, Spider-Man! Marvel Spider-Man, this game looks so good. I'm so excited for this. Legos! Oh, Lego. Oh, okay. We're getting a Lego game. Marvel vs. Cap, and eh. I was hyped at one point for that, but not really anymore. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Oh, and there's the main attraction. There it is. And that's all the footage you'll get. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. Imagine if that's all they showed. <laughs> that was your trailer. Welcome to the stage, Jimmy Pataro, Chairman of Disney Consumer Products and Interactive Media! It's Mickey Mouse, my boy, Mickey. You all enjoying D23 so far? That's what I thought. That's great. Well, I am. I wish I was there. And I am thrilled to welcome all of you here in the arena, as well as all of you joining us via live stream to the Walt Disney Company Video Showcase. Now we have an exciting program. Yeah, that's the show. Go home. <laughs> filled with previews, never before seen gameplay, announcements and product reveals, and of course some very special guests. Now, what you are about to see is a result of innovation, collaboration, and inspiration, led by the team at Disney Consumer Products and Interactive Media, where it is our mission to bring the magic of Disney into the daily lives of families and fans around the world. And when it comes to games, we're working with the best developers in the world to create experiences that put you at the center of the story. In fact, gamers and fans of our stories have never had more to look forward to. And our slate, quite honestly, has never been more exciting. Whether it's Disney magic, Pixar creativity, Marvel action, or Star Wars adventure, there's something for everyone. And over the next hour, you're gonna hear from the folks bringing you the biggest and most innovative games and tech-driven experiences in our history. You're gonna get a first look at Star Wars Battlefront II. <laughs> our most ambitious Star Wars game yet. It has everything you all have been asking for. Single player campaign mode. <laughs> much more content than the last Battlefront and so much more. Well, of course. Now, my daughter <laughs> All the first Battlefront was was just multiplayer. Are in the audience today. And I'm incredibly proud that for the very first time as a part of a major Star Wars video game, we will feature a female protagonist. She's a new character named Aiden, and players can follow her journey through an original story that helps bridge the gap between Return, Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. I can't wait for you to meet this character and learn more about her fantastic story. So it's canon. We'll then take a look at Marvel's Spider-Man. Yeah! This is an all-new experience from Insomniac Games and Marvel that's exclusive to Sony's PlayStation. Now, this is a Spider-Man game unlike any you've ever played before, featuring a Spider-Man you've never seen before and a story you've never heard before. To say this game is epic would be an understatement. And of course, we have something for our Disney fans. I'm assuming there's a few Disney fans in the audience right now. Well, trust me. 
You won't want to miss the announcement we're going to make about what's next for Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, <laughs> Something big's happening. Something massive is going to happen. <laughs> if they're saying if they're building it up like that. So it is going to be the last game. I had a feeling it would be. <laughs> Now, our friends at Square Enix have truly outdone themselves. I'm not going to steal anyone's thunder. I'm going to stop with that. Um, lots to look forward to there. But that is not all. In addition to these games, we're going to unveil two exciting, never-before-seen projects that tap the latest technology and immerse you into the Marvel and Star Wars universes in ways you've only just imagined. If you've ever cool. dreamed of being a Jedi or a superhero, and my son, who's also in the audience today, will definitely tell you that I have, well, your time has now come. These experiences truly are mind-blowing, and I can't wait for you to see them today. Now, the original plan was for me to host today's show, but I have a couple of friends who, between the two of them, have tens of millions of subscribers and followers. And as it turns out, I have just about zero. And so, yeah, I thought me you too. all <laughs> might be really excited to hear from them instead. You know them as Jack Septicai and Strawberry17. And they're going I only to know one of them. take the stage in just a minute. But before I wrap up, I want to thank all of you, whether it's our theme parks, our movies, our TV shows, or our games, we're only able to bring the Walt Disney Company stories to life because you have made them such an important part of yours. So on behalf of everyone who helped make today possible, thank you. Now let's get started. Please welcome Jack Septicai and Strawberry17. Aw, oh, snap. And what's up, J10 Raiders? What's going on? <laughs> Thank you for the raid. <laughs> this is crazy. I just want I never heard of her before. Thank you guys both so much. I know how passionate both of you are about video games and I personally couldn't think of a better duo to be hosting us today. So Stop it some more. Oh, Jimmy. Keep going. With that, <laughs> they are 100% yours. Knock them dead. Woo! Thank you. Bye guys. All right, see ya. Well, uh, I'm oh. excited to talk about video games. Are you? Yes. Who else is excited about video games? Anyone excited for Kingdom Hearts? Me. <laughs> Alright, we'll save that for, you know, last. Wait. God damn it, I knew they were gonna do it. Wait, let's, okay. Let's do this on the count of three, okay? Okay. Three, two, one, Kingdom Spider Hearts! Oh. We gotta be on the same page. We're hosting this. It has to be, okay. you know, together. Okay. Yeah, we let's can do, do this it. one more time. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. Star Wars! Let's kick it off with some Battlefront 2! Yeah, might as well. That's a safe way to start with. I'm fine with that because I want to see so, more of this. We got some very special guests here today. <laughs> Please help me welcome on stage Janina Gavankar, who plays Commander Aiden Versio in Star Wars Battlefront 2, and Steve Blank from the Lucasfilm Story Group. That is that new? I can't do it. You just tell, please tell them. Please tell them immediately. Of course, I would be happy to. That is a brand new theme song for Iden Versio. You have your own song. That's crazy. I want a theme song. Me too. Pretty cool. Next year. Next year. Next year. Okay. <laughs> so, Steve, you're from the Lucasfilm Story Group. <laughs> what the fuck? So could you give us a little bit of an overview on what Battlefront 2 is for? those of us who may not be familiar with it. 
Of course, I would be happy to. If Starfire doesn't so still on the stage, yeah, me too. Events, talked about a couple of details. We unveiled back in uh, April at Star Wars Celebration a number of new pieces of information, and then we followed up last month at EA Play, which maybe people saw Janina host in an incredible way. Did great. Killed it. And what we've been sharing is some great details um, coming out of DICE, Motive, and Criterion for all of the great multiplayer combat we're going to see. We're going to see uh, across all three eras in this game in multiplayer, so we're going to see prequel trilogy, we're going to see original trilogy, we're going to see new trilogy, and incredible space combat is going to be a major part of this game. And of course, the reason Janina and I are here today, we have announced that there's going to be a single player campaign mode. Yes. Yes. I am, oh yeah, go ahead guys. I am most excited for that, so just please tell me more about the single player campaign. I would love to. So it's been a great collaboration with Motive Studios and specifically our writers for the single player campaign are Mitch Dyer and Walt Williams. Awesome guys. <laughs> and this image that is up on the giant screen behind me. Oh, uh, it's very big. It's very big. Is perfectly encapsulates sort of what the catalyst for this story is. So you've got standing up there uh, Commander Iden Versio herself, leader of Inferno Squad with her comrades Dell and Hask in the background, and they are watching the explosion of the second Death Star, a really memorable moment, obviously, from Star Wars. Mm. But what is unique about this is that we're seeing it from the Imperial perspective now. And so what does that mean if you are part of the Empire you watch the destruction of the second Death Star. You know about the death of the Emperor. What challenges does that prevent, present to you? What choices do you have to make? And that's really the thrust of our story, is watching Aiden as she has to go down that path. So you play the... Oh, that's cool. That's you play the bad guys. So we've heard a lot about Commander Aiden Versio. You're 100 feet tall on the screen. <laughs> And you're, uh, we know you're going to burst your soul. They just gave me a helmet. This. I'm dying. Oh my God. I'm so <laughs> excited. So uh, tell, tell us what it's like to be part of the Star Wars universe and uh, to get a role like that. Well, are there any Star Wars fans in the audience? I hope so. Yes. Yeah. I I imagine what it's like to sit in this chair and have the honor of being this person. It is truly, it's the, the most wonderful thing that I could have. I never imagined this would happen to me. I'm, I'm so honored. That being said, I'm also a gamer, and <laughs> I have been for a while, and I love this medium so very much for storytelling, and it, it's like the, this wonderful place to, to be able to unpack this perspective. Uh, and the, the thing that was so surprising in this whole experience so far has been how collaborative it is. I did not think that was the case. I thought I would show up and they'd say, please stand here and say these words, and now you're in a Star War. And that is not <laughs> yeah. what it's been. As actors, we've been given access to the writers and the producers and the directors and, and military consultants to really work on making this an authentic Star Wars story. And they let me do things. Like I got to do EA Play and like I got- I loved you at that. Can I just interject? I was excited about this, but seeing you so pumped and so passionate about your character made me like jump out of my skin. Thank like you. I have to play this I game. Can't, I can't, I get to come to stuff like this and then like, do you want to see a video? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I would like we to see a video. See you videos. <laughs> this, this video in particular is wonderful because it's like a backstage pass to see what it's like to break the oh. ground. I thought it was gameplay. <laughs> Roll that tape. <laughs> oh. Well, there's some gameplay, okay. I've always been a fan of the dark side. The idea of the Imperial perspective is you never really understand who they are as people, right? Or how the organization works. How can we distill that and how can we make a story around that? The story of Battlefront 2 is absolutely an essential story. What happened after Return of the Jedi? What happened to the galaxy? What happened to the Empire without an Emperor? What it might feel like to be in this galaxy as it starts to break apart. What's really exciting about this story is that we're going to see it from the point of view of a character like Ida. My God! So we're going to see it from this Imperial point. <laughs> Looks of view. good. Inferno Squad. Is I mean, the first one looked really good too. That most people don't even know exist. We weren't expecting special forces. We happen to be on Endor when the second Death Star explodes. 
Aiden is presented with an extreme challenge, the destruction of the Death Star 2 and the death of the Emperor. What sort of choices would somebody in that situation have to make about who they are and what the galaxy was going to become? And it's interesting, does that mean, now that the Empire's fallen, that they're the underdogs? Aiden is a tried and true and through and through Imperial. She's somebody who grew up on a planet called Vardos. She was very quickly put into a military camp for children. She has spent her whole life building up to this moment to be commander of Inferno Squad. Moff Raiders inform the Admiral that Operation Syndic proceed as planned. Hask is the most zealous of them all, I would say. He's the most interested and invested in how far the Empire is willing to go. He was an orphan, so he needed something to latch onto. Empire is peace and justice and order. Even when people are faltering around him, he pushes forward and says, no, the Empire is the way. I'm picking up distress calls, too many to count. Dell has seen more of the galaxy than most people in the Empire. He actually grew up on Coruscant during the time of the Jedi. He brings a lot of humor. Him and Movie I spoilers. have a bit of a banter, <laughs> with a bit of a laugh. Yes. <laughs> Family is a really important element in Star Wars, and one of the things that we wanted to make sure we captured is the dynamic between Garrick Versio and his daughter Aiden Versio. This is the catalyst for Aiden, where she learns the future of the Empire, and she's elevated to a point by her father. Your next assignments, they are unusual. She's my daughter. She's all I have. I do need for her to understand why I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. Everything in Star Wars is connected, and part of our job is to make sure that the games we're making do connect back into that larger universe. But we're now able to use this game in Battlefront 2 as a resource to take this information into future development projects. Hope cannot save them! I think all those gamers out there are gonna just love it. This is the culmination of all the things that are good in the world. <laughs> Video games, Star Wars, and a team of people that are willing to take the time to do the work. We have to take risks, we have to be bold, we have to push everyone's boundaries and leave a good footprint behind. I'm still excited for this. <laughs> this will be a good game to do a LP on and to do a multiplayer gaming with. No, you didn't miss Kingdom Hearts yet. It's not for till later. That was cool. No big deal. That was awesome. <laughs> no big deal. Just a Star Wars game. You could feel the whole game in the stage as well. Like a massage. Kind yeah. Of <laughs> I saw a few lightsabers down there, so that's just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> So there, there's a lot of Star Wars out there. We have we have TV, we have movies, we have animated. Um, so what sets this story apart from those stories, and specifically in regards to video games? Uh, you have the term story in your job title, so you take this one. <laughs> I will tackle that. So I think one of the things that we always approach as a story group when we're thinking about telling new Star Wars stories in general is, what is the right story per platform? Because each platform has its strengths and what it can, can really revel in. And one of the great things about video games is that you actually get to inhabit a character. You get to play as somebody. And so what was fascinating to us about, the, about Battlefront II and Aiden Versio is that you get to be a commander in the Empire at this really challenging time. And so that's something that we wanted people to be able to feel and be able to, to go out there and be that Imperial. And so with that video game, you get the opportunity to do that. You can play as that character, which is always incredibly exciting. Yeah. Uh, I'm also kind of a big Star Wars fan. And What's up, Sness? I've never heard of Vargas <laughs> before. Is it a yeah. place I can vacation? Is it good this time of year? Please tell me more. Uh, I will answer that as Aiden. OK. <laughs> Vardos is beautiful. I'll tell you why. It's an imperial homeworld. It's beautiful because it's peaceful and it's orderly. Ooh. Like all planets should be in the galaxy. <sighs> yeah. My, my butt is clenched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, it is beautiful. I mean, it's where she grew up and it's where she went to school. She was the top of her class. Vardos holds a lot of heart for her. Yeah. And it's also where she learned to be a commander, you know? And like, like look at this girl. She, 
the great thing is, on November 17th, you get to feel <laughs> what family friendly like for clenching butts. Yep. <laughs> for the Empire. <laughs> That's cool. I'm excited. I can't wait to play. It's kind of scary. Just say <laughs> Just, Just come on over to the side of things. Okay, I, I'm warming up to it a small <laughs> bit, okay? So we're going to try something a little different this time. We're, we're going to throw to uh, a caller on a live stream. Um, we have uh, a person named John who's a huge fan of the series. And they're actually in Anaheim. Yeah. So we're going to try and throw to them if Thank we have you. that. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, John, are you there? Yep, hello? Hello? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, I want to ask a few questions. Um, my other name is FN2187. <laughs> Hey. It's Finn. Oh man. <laughs> Traitor, I know, right? I love you too, babe. I do. Oh. <laughs> John, I'm um, a bit flustered. I knew you were coming out, but now I'm here and it's 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 all happening. I had to, I had to. I've just left the uh, last Jedi panel and uh Woo! I had to uh, I had to stop by and, and, and give my gamers a, a visit. Well you're a big Battlefront fan, right? Genuinely. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. yes I'm a, a massive Battlefront fan and I, I don't know if you remember, I actually sent out a tweet which wasn't planned. <laughs> I just sent out a tweet because I'm a massive fan of Bra Battlefront and EA responded. I've been, you know, trying to fight for the fans. Yeah, he's from Force Awakens, yes. He's uh, Finn. Yes! <laughs> he's the guy that plays Finn. Also, on top of that, uh, you get to play as me. Nice! <laughs> She's good. Are you going to play as yourself? Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. So, as a huge fan of Battlefront 2, what are you most looking forward to in this new version of the game? Um, I've, I've, I've only played, like, uh... Wait, you've played it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yikes. Dude, what? Yep. Yep, that's, that's me right there. That's Amazing. Right there. Come on! Uh, <laughs> by the way, don't judge my aiming, okay? It's different. <laughs> the game's set up different. <laughs> but I've, 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 I've played it, as you can <laughs> see, and, and, it's, and it's really good. You are phenomenal in it. It's Thanks. fantastic. Oh it's a great God. story. There's space battles, thank God. <laughs> on a more intimate level. You, you, you feel like you're, you're playing against real danger because you're more invested in these characters due to that single player campaign. But also on top of that, I'm going to be whooping a lot of fans. <laughs> oh, don't worry, there's going to be some time for that. <laughs> well, thanks for giving us something to look forward to. Now you guys are leaving us with something today? Yes, uh, check under your chairs. Oh, us. Not you guys. Check under your chairs. <laughs> We'll get yeah. you one too. I didn't Those know you were, were coming, uh, so we didn't bring one for you. Whoa, look no, at the one for John. I feel like that's yeah. a thing. But that's, I know they're not under your chairs at this moment, but we are happy to say we didn't want to leave anyone empty handed. So at the end of this panel, when you are leaving, everyone will get this fantastic poster. It's like Christmas! Of Iden. Thanks for joining us this helmet. afternoon, guys. Thank you. Thank you so that's much, cool. guys. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, thank you so guys so much for, for being here. Thank Give it up guys. for Star Wars. Give it up for Star Wars. And that's out in when November, I think it is. And there's supposed to be a beta soon too. Just John Boyega walking up on stage. Whatever. Back of his head still. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's my name. Yes, I, I love you too. <laughs> so that that was a little crazy. We all went a bit wild there <clears> with that one. So we're going to slow things down a small bit. We're going to change things up and switch gears a bit. So we're going to bring out Mike Goslin who is the VP of Advanced Development at Disney. So, give it up for Mike. Woo! Mike so what's this now? What's Hi. How you doing? Thanks for joining us. So, I, I heard you're here today to talk about augmented reality. So, for people who don't know what that is, could you uh, explain it a little bit? Sure, augmented reality is a technology that lets you combine computer generated objects with the real world. So oh. bringing them together to create an illusion. So I could put a virtual tiger using AR 
right here in front of us, and it would look like it was really here. We could walk around it and look from any angle, and it'd stay in the right spot. Wow, I would want like a cute monkey or a panda. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. We can do that too. But it's also like the Snapchat filters, right? Yeah, you know the mustaches, you know, you can Pokemon put the mustache. Go. It, again, it's a computer mustache, real face. Dancing hot dog, dog. I, mean, I mean what? I love we that think, stuff. We think AR can do a lot more. Really? Yeah. So how, how does Disney fit into the whole augmented reality world then? Disney's always used technologies to find new ways to tell stories. I learned this back when I started uh, at Imagineering, and we think AR is a great platform for a new kind of storytelling. All right. <laughs> so I'm excited to see some of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So do you have something to show us? Well, so Star Wars, we got to talk about Star Wars, so. Of course. Yeah. AR has always been a big part of the Star Wars stories, going back all the way to the beginning. So remember in the first, in, a, in a, a New Hope, Princess Leia appears early in the movie as a hologram, and then later all the way up to The part. Force Awakens, where they have the, the galaxy maps and the, the Starkiller base. Yeah. So it's always been really important. My personal favorite, though, is the holochess game from the Millennium Ooh, Falcon, you yeah. know, the little monsters. That's so cool. That, anybody like holochess? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we haven't been able to play it yet, though. Well, we've always wanted to create that game, and we've never been able, the technology just hasn't existed to do that until now. What? Until now? We've been working on our own version of augmented reality, and I'm, I'm very excited to give you a very first look at it today. I've got Whoa. this case right here, so let me pull it out. So this has never been seen before. I'm revealing this for the first time. Yes. We've been working on, we teamed up with Lenovo and Lucasfilm to build our very own augmented reality headset. Uh, this will this will let everyone experience their favorite moments from Star Wars like never before. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. So let me tell you. It's you can watch Star Wars, Wars, Wars in virtual <laughs> reality. You to your phone, you slip your phone into the headset right here. Whoa. And then you put it on and you're ready to play. <gasps> that's incredible. That's Whoa. so easy. You want to try it on? Yeah. Here you go. <clears throat> Whoa. Wait. Whoa. Can you see me? Yeah. How Wait, so I, I can still, like, I can still see everything. Hi! Yeah, so... <laughs> Do I look cool? <laughs> so it's really important to be able to see, right? Because, again, you're combining computer images with the real world. So you've got to be able to see. It's like wearing sunglasses. Yeah. So not everybody can try it on today, unfortunately. So I was able to smuggle some footage out of our lab oh. on some experiences that we've been working on. Nice. Right, so now you can play Hall of Chess for real in your own living room. See, that's our rug. That's our room. And you can bring... Epic battles to life, where action figures run around, and you've got X-wings and, and uh, Imperial walkers all in your room, all your living you. room. You're just and we're we're just getting started. Wow. Okay, so I have to ask this, just because. Yeah, I mean, clap. That's that's incredible. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> it's 2017. It's about time. We've been waiting for this. <laughs> but I think what everyone's probably thinking. What about lightsabers? Yeah, I'm gonna definitely wear that in public. Yeah, I have a VR headset. But like, hey, so am I am I cool yet? Where Luke. <laughs> and then someone throws like a tomato at you. Has anybody dreamed of having that moment, turning on a lightsaber? I think I think there's a couple okay. of lightsabers down so, there. <laughs> so that's what we're going for, and we're going to be showing you a great deal more of this in the coming weeks. We've got lots of stuff to show. I can only give you a quick glimpse today, but we've got a little bit of video here. Ooh. Wow. Same thing as Facebook, yeah. Awaken your inner Jedi. Your lightsaber's broken. <laughs> oh, what a tease, you gonna leave man. us like that, Mike? What you gonna tease. tease us and leave it there? <laughs> so, so if you're interested in finding out more, you're in luck. We have a website, JediChallenges.com. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thanks Thank for Thank you. Man. I'm gonna take. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. The lightsaber's broken. <laughs> just real life hollow chest whatever no big deal <laughs> i can't wait to do the lightsaber thing yeah me That's too <laughs> okay so now we've moved on from star wars so let's let's get a little bit marvel. into marvel is there any marvel time for some marvel baby <laughs> we're so kicking off a spider-man a small game called spider-man at e3 oh yeah press conference <laughs> 
pretty big deal, so let's bring on stage right now Bill Roseman, the Executive Creative Director at Marvel Games, and Brian Intahar, Creative Director at Insomniac Games. Give it up! So, Spider-Man. I like the red, too. Yeah, yeah. got to be on brand, right? Hey, uh, Empire State University, did, is that where you went? It's an amazing institution of higher learning. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we're so incredibly excited about Spider-Man. I mean, we're all a bunch of webheads here, right, guys? Yeah. A little bit. Um, <laughs> so, can you talk about the game and uh, what goes into creating it? Because it's it's massive. This is a big game. It it is big, and um, I mean, it's funny you mention that because it's uh, our most ambitious game yet. I mean, it's really unprecedented to have uh, Marvel working with Insomniac uh, and Sony. And yes, it's going to be it's going to be huge. It's going to be massive, but at the same time, we're really telling a very personal and human story. Uh, and I was reminded of that yesterday. I was actually sitting out there, and I was watching Joe Casada during his Cup of Joe talk. And he was telling a story when, you know, when he became editor-in-chief, and he, and he went into Stan Lee's office, and he said, Stan, what's the, the key to telling a, a Marvel story, creating a Marvel character? And Stan said, hey, you can have a character in a cool costume on the edge of a building, and they can jump off, and you can look and say, well, that's a pretty cool costume. But Stan said, if you can get the people to care about the person under the mask, if you get to know who they are, who they're fighting for, what they care about, then when that character jumps off the building, you are with them jumping off the building. And when I was a kid and I read my Spider-Man comics, whatever was going on in my life, it went away. Yeah. And I was with Spider-Man. Yeah. And so when we decided to make the game, we wanted to find uh, a partner who understood that who not only could tell amazing stories, who not only had a spectacular level of quality, and could also bring the fun of yeah. Spider-Man. But most importantly, we wanted to find friends who grew up with Spider-Man, just like us. And we found that perfect partner in Insomniac. Aww. Aww. Oh, man. You guys are gonna make us cry up here. Stop make it. me cry. So, as you said, Insomniac, huge pedigree, very great wealth library of games, and we all love them, and they're super... No, this is me so filming the camera. <laughs> Spider-Man game this time around. Obviously, yes, it's live. It's Spider-Man. I mean... Good answer. <laughs> uh, I mean, for me and for everybody in Insomniac, I mean, quite frankly, this is a dream come true. I mean, look at that character. I Badass. Mean, look, we're, we're, we are just like everybody out there. We are fans. We love this character we love marvel and when it comes to spider-man he just fits our studio culture our personality so well from his sense of humor to the relatability to telling that human story but also swinging around new york city <laughs> all those gadgets all the quips it's it fits insomniac perfectly yeah so, uh, Bill, it's a, it's a new universe and it's a new story. It still has the DNA of actually being Spider-Man, but could you tell us a bit about the, the new world that you guys are creating? Yeah, well, we, we were really inspired, uh, in fact, by... Um, there was a comic book series called Ultimate Spider-Man. So good! M might have heard of it. So good! <laughs> and when they launched that it's book, amazing. they were, they were, they were uh, retelling the Spider-Man story from the very beginning, but in, in a new way. They wanted to keep readers guessing, and we were really inspired by that. So you will see fam very familiar faces, but you will see them in new positions. You'll see a, a, a mix of characters you know very well, and then there may be some characters that you don't know, but that you're soon going to love. So we want to keep everybody on the edge of your seats and tell an all-new original Spider-Man story. We're going to tell our Spider-Man story. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Cool, cool. So did you bring a video for us, Bill? Well, I think not only do we have a video, well, why don't you take it away because you, right. you know, you're in it. So as I said, you know, I'm up here representing Insomniac, but um, I'm just part of a, an amazing team in Burbank and in North Carolina that are working on Spider-Man. And we have, it's video game development is challenging, tough, but also exciting. And we have a little piece that shows you what it goes into making Spider-Man. Awesome. <laughs>
The greatest thing about working on a Spider-Man game is that you're working on a Spider-Man game. Oh, that was cool. The hardest thing is that it's <laughs> that's new footage. Game. We really care about storytelling here at Insomniac. And I think that's how we go into every day we come here. There's this push to really get it right. One of the most compelling things uh, about Spider-Man is just when Peter Parker and Spider-Man's worlds collide. And we've tried really hard to weave the two stories oh together. Oh my god. <laughs> a story that is not necessarily just a superhero story, but a human story as well. So this Spider-Man is a little different. He's older, he's 23, so he's been Spider-Man for eight years, and kind of like an athlete in the prime of his career, he's starting to get good at the Spider-Man thing. The nice thing about playing an experienced nice Spider-Man is that he's already familiar with his powers, right? He's not just discovering them. We always think of Spider-Man as we call him the acrobatic improviser. He's looking for not only man how that he can take his uh, just looks so smooth, <laughs> position, but what around him could he use this object to grab with his webs and throw at an enemy? We want people to not only see the enemies in front of them, but the environment oh, nice. around to take advantage of both of them. He also knows that the criminals out in the city know how he works as well, so um, he's got to mix it up. So even though he is more experienced, the challenges are going to be bigger than he's ever faced before. Spider-Man has a rich history of having great stories. The core of our story is this duality between being Peter Parker and being Spider-Man. What's cool about Mr. Negative is that he also has a duality. He's got his positive side as Martin Lee, who runs the homeless shelters in the city, but he also has his negative side. Martin Lee. When Peter makes the connection that the leader of the Inner Demons is the guy who my aunt works for, we got the perfect collision of those two worlds. So many people have their own vision of what Spider-Man should look like, what he should sound like, and in the end, we just have to put a new and fresh twist on who he is. And for us, it's really, really important to deliver those big spectacle moments, those near impossible scenarios that only someone like Spider-Man can survive, and put you in that action. You got this, you got this, you got this! We understand what this character means to people in here. And we're making this game with a lot of heart, and we're gonna do whatever it takes to give people the ultimate Spider-Man experience, the game that they've been waiting for. A lot of people were getting, were complaining about the um, quick time events in this. You know what, I'm okay with it, honestly. I'm fine with it. that video like 200 times and I still yeah. smile after every time I see it. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> I cosplay like as Spider-Gwen yep. and I, I love the Spidey-verse. So I'm... Wait, so when am I going to see the white spider version of your... Uh, wh when is it? I, oh. I got my suit. I'll be right back. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. No, no. Okay, we'll just finish this up. Guys... Spider-Gwen. We have never seen before in that video. There was Peter's apartment and he was fighting Fisk. That's exciting. Yeah, well, we wanted to bring something new to the D23 crowd, right? So... So those two scenes uh, that you saw, they talk about those colliding worlds. Like, we're going to get very personal. So you, we, you see where Peter Parker lives uh, when he has the mask off. You see what's all in his room. And all those elements make Peter who Oh, he cool. Is. So you get to play as Peter, too? Uh, and so we're getting very, very personal and intimate with Peter. And then at the same time, you see him very cool. on that mask. He goes out in the world, and he fights huge characters like Wilson Fisk. So, uh, again, uh, this, we're going to see... It, it's, it's, a, it's a fresh new way to see both sides of this character's life that we love. And, and that's just really a, a small glimpse at some of the characters you're going to see in this game. Yeah, that's we just the opening. A, a, yeah, that's just the opening of the game, you know, in the beginning of the game. So we have a huge cast, a lots of villains, lots of them. Yes. And uh, I think people are going to be pretty excited. I'm pretty excited, too. Me, too. <laughs> Okay, so we've talked a lot about the story side of the new Spider-Man game, but everyone wants to know, I want to know about, and everyone's worried about it, is the, the web swing, the traversal, the parkour. Can you tell us a bit as about Peter, that? As Peter says in the video, we got this. We got it. We're going to be good. We're going to be okay. Um, yes, nailing the, the web swinging is crucial. It's a requirement. And, I mean, even since you know, E3 was a month ago, you know, we've already improved our web swinging. It's easier to gain speed now. Um, you know, yes, we've read all the feedback online and we're reading <laughs> all that stuff. We listen to you guys a lot. Yes. And we are, you know, constantly looking to improve the game. So, you know, we want to continue to have that sense of flow, fluidity, no obstacles too big for him to overcome. And that takes, I get that with the traversal, but also in the combat, you know, combat's evolving every single day. You saw one of the uh, gadgets, that web tripwire, right? Well, yeah. you can stick it in objects. 
What I can do is also stick it onto an enemy, and if they're close enough, they just slam into each other. So, That's so we cool. Want that gadget <laughs> to really allow him to have a lot of fun during combat as well. That's awesome. I can't wait to play it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah. Have a great show. We'll probably get another demo probably around the PlayStation event, I assume. I am Spider-Man! So much Spider-Man stuff! Awesome. That's, uh, that's pretty great. It's amazing, it's spectacular, it's superior, it's gonna be the ultimate Spider-Man experience. So let me guess, this transitions <laughs> to Spider-Man being in Marvel? Yeah, Versus Capcom? Um, so what else can we check out here uh, at D23 for Marvel Games? Yeah, so if you go to the Marvel booth, um, we have five games that you can get your hands on right now. We have uh, two of our mobile games, uh, Marvel Future Fight and Marvel Puzzle Quest. Uh, we have two console games, uh, Marvel Heroes Omega mm -hmm. and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Oh, all, love that game. All at the booth right yeah. now. You can play them today. Nice. I'll do it after this. Wait, there's, there's only four games up there, though. Well, Jack, you are very smart, my friend. I'm glad you uh, mentioned that because our <laughs> fifth game is Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Yeah! Yeah. I got to play that at E3. It's incredible. It's really cool. This one, it's yeah. a sequel to the first one. What's awesome about this is the villain is Kang. We, we, yeah, that was not a very good reaction to Lego. Eh. Conquer them and bring them all together. So you're going to have... Who's played the first one? The is it any good? Character. So, keeping with the Spider-Man theme, you, in the game you may have, from the past, Spider-Man Noir. Oh, from the ooh. future, yes. you may have Spider-Man 2099. And from a whole different timeline, you may have... Your fave strawberry, Spider Gwen. Yes, please! I've been waiting! Spider Gwen's in it? Awesome. Actually, another Spider Man that we haven't announced yet. Who? But hey, you know, again, this is for the D23 fans. You want to see a character reveal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I play it's just your standard Lego game. Ah, gotcha. Ah, Homecoming Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Tie it in with the movie. There we go. It's the homemade suit from Spider-Man Homecoming, and uh, hey, it, the game is available to pre-order today. Oh, it's so Whoa. exciting. That suit looks so comfy. Like, that's my sweatpants. Yeah, he's so cute. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> um, so, that was incredible. But that's not all. You have a really, really big announcement today. Well, I mean, again, D23 is the ultimate fan experience, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh... How about a world exclusive premiere? Yes, please. Uh, sure. Yes, please. Do you want to hear about a game that no one in the entire universe have heard about yet? Sure. All right, this is just for you. You know, we've talked about uh, our mobile games. We've talked about console games. Hey, you ready for Marvel to go virtual reality? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, I'm, I'm not interested. <laughs> God damn it, I actually thought it was... Uh... It's gonna be something new, like console-wise. So what, you put on the VR and you become a comic book? <laughs> these kind of things, eh. Uh, VR is not really that exciting to me, honestly. Yeah, it looks like it would be a good arcade game, that's for sure. Alright, Lockjack! 
<laughs> yeah, I totally agree. So you might have been wondering who this man is who just wandered up on stage while that was going on. We have on stage with us Steve Arnold, who is the head of Oculus Studios. Hey guys. Thank you, Steve, for being with us here today. It's so great to be here with you guys. Was that Captain Marvel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know how excited you are. Yeah. She's my fave. I like her, too. Yeah. Um, Steve, let me ask, why a Marvel game in VR? I mean, why not, right? But why? Well, in VR, I mean, you can do the impossible. And so we have this incredible opportunity to deliver experiences that are essentially just wish fulfillment. Yeah. And so I remember years ago when I first tried the Rift, uh, I think that my first thought coming out of it was, man, I wish I had superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, I want to fly. I want to shoot beams out of my hands. I want to lift a car over my head and throw it at bad guys. And so uh, maybe a little selfishly, I wanted to build a game that delivered on that fantasy. And for me personally, my opinion is there is no one that does superheroes and superpowers better than the folks at Marvel. And so they have been the perfect partner to make this game with. Yeah, I mean, you're spot on with that one. Yeah. That's, that's so exciting though, right? You read a comic book, you do the cosplay, the next best thing would to be, become that hero and have the powers. For sure. That's usually what Photoshop is for, for me. But um, now we get to go into VR. So for people who have never tried VR, can you tell us how this will work with Marvel? Sure, there, there are a couple of things that VR does really well that we wanted to lean into in this game in particular. One is kind of the sense of scale you get being in virtual reality. And so we're building characters like Rocket Raccoon who are actually really small. Mm -hmm. Then on the other end of the spectrum, there's the Hulk who's humongous. And when you're in there looking down at your enemies, I mean, you genuinely feel like a giant. Uh, and then secondly, the, there's a power of social presence that you get in VR where you can be in there with someone who's maybe miles and miles away, but you feel like you're in the same room with them. And so we really wanted to make sure this game, you could play it cooperatively and be teammates. And I mean, who doesn't love a classic Marvel team up? So yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you mentioned that there's Rocket and we can see Hulk on the screen and some other characters as well, but are there any other characters that you're gonna bring to the game? Well, I can say this, uh, you know, this is only the beginning. There's going to be a full roster of characters. And next week at San Diego Comic-Con, you can play the game. You can unleash your inner hero at San Diego Comic-Con. And we're also going to do another character reveal. Ooh. Any hints? You know, I'm surprised. They haven't shown the, uh, the Square Enix Avengers game yet at all. <laughs> they announced that, but there hasn't been anything about it since then. Um, well, uh, I hope you don't get mad, but maybe one of your friends. Welcome to Marvel Powers United VR. Tyler's to my right. Hi. Hi, and Ethan. This is a big. I'm so small. All right, come on, guys. We got work to do. We need to work as a team. <laughs> Thought we were just gonna get to hang out and look at cool space oh, stuff. I got it. It's Tyler, where are you? I'm above you. I am a surgeon with this thing. Watch what? this sick move. I got a missile. That's pretty sick, bro. <laughs> All right, so we just finished up with Marvel Powers United VR. This game is an exclusive on the Oculus Rift and Touch, uh, so it'll be coming out in 2018. That's Thanks, cool. Markiplier. Oh, oh. Oh. oh, and there's Markiplier Hi. there. Hi. Look who we have! <laughs> oh, yes. I know. So you got to play the game already. Yeah, we didn't, but you got to play the game. I know, yeah. Of course. It was great. Must be nice. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Must be nice being Markiplier. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, no, it was really cool. Um, they actually, we played it for about an hour. That was only like a minute long video. We had a ton of fun with it. Yeah. Wow. We, we, like it was an early release of it. So we, sure. we tried our best to break it. And that was even more fun, mm. uh, just being <laughs> with our friends. Because you were right, like, the sense of scale is different. Like, I played the Hulk, and I felt so tall. And, it, and like, uh, Ethan was Rocket Raccoon down right. there, and he was just like, whoa! <laughs> Mark, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, it's me. But then you can trigger Rocket's jetpack, and then you're 20 feet in the air! Yeah, yeah. whatever, that's yeah. less impressive. Bigger than the Hulk. Yeah. Rocket. Best part about this is, guys, when it comes out, we can all play it together. I'll be Captain Marvel. I call Hulk. I'll be Hulk. Oh. 
Mark can be Hulk. Okay. You can be Rocket. Why do I have to be Rocket? <laughs> I'm, I got Hulk, right? I can be Hulk. Uh, I'm not for sure about that. Uh, well, well. What the hell is that? <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh my God, is it time? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Is it finally time? <laughs> oh shit! Here we fucking go. <laughs> well, hold on because this looks the same a bit. So far, this looks like old footage at the moment. Maybe they'll show the new one in a second here. They're hyping up people right now, that's why. But still, this is still a good trailer, though. Yeah, I'm surprised it wasn't even in English this time either. But yeah, like I said, we've seen this one. This was that, uh, this was showcased before E3, so. But I, I still assume we'll get our new trailer here. That is supposed to happen, so. Which is today, so let's see what... Yeah, they left a message, I know. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Come on. I mean, of course. So, it is my extreme honor to be able to welcome on stage Tetsuya Nomura and... Papa Nomura! ...to talk about Kingdom Hearts 3. Papa Nomura is coming in. Oh boy, there he is! <laughs> Man, we good response. Good, great response. We're celebrating a 15 years. <laughs> right? Release the game, damn it! Can you reflect on uh, the fan response of Kingdom Hearts? え、まずキングダムハーツが <笑> 15周年分のいろんなものが今年出て、すべてが3に繋がっているという感じですかね。Well, I feel like there's so much going on for the 15th anniversary on the road to 3. Uh, we had the release of Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 Remix, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, and recently underwent a name change for Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. So I believe we're doing all the things we need to, and I think he has a little more to say. え、そしてあの、15周年記念してですね、あの、ワールドツアーでコンサート世界回りまして、先日あの、終了したんですけども、え、自分も一部の
、えー、会場に伺ってですねあのファンの熱気を直接感じる貴重な機会を得ました。Well, recently we wrapped up the Kingdom Hearts World Orchestra where I was able to go and visit. I've heard from our staff and saw the reactions and actually really felt the passion、uh, myself from all the fans. That's awesome. So, at last, <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> So, at the last D23 event, you announced the Big Hero 6 world. And we already know. Yes. What's <laughs> the new world? Here we go. t a n g l e d world as well. But I believe that you have a new world to show off for us today. Oh boy, here we go. Zen Kai no D23 there were Baymax no world to Tono and Rapunzel and Hapio Salemashta. これまで D23 は何度か参加させていただいたんですけども、まあ、あまり多くの情報はお届けできなかったんですが今回はちょっと特別<笑>、えー、新しいワールドの、えー、情報を多めに持ってきましたのでご覧いただきたいなと思ってます。Well, I've actually been to D23 a couple of times, but I don't think I've been able、so、Apollo, to get that、doing? much information. So this time we have something pretty special. What the hell is it? <laughs> Show me! Alright, l well, do you guys want to see it now? Yeah!、Uh, yes, please! <laughs> Namura, please just show it. <laughs> All right, so let's roll the trailer. Oh, here we go. Here, oh, here we go. Oh, yo. <laughs> oh, the nobodies. Oh, shit. There they are. They look good. That was nice. <laughs> What the hell is that? That thing is cool. Leave it and dive in. What is it? <gasps> oh my god! Yes! <laughs> It's fucking Toy Story! <laughs> <laughs> They look pretty good in toy form. <laughs> Fucking awesome. I'm so hyped. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to my room, yo! <laughs> oh my god. ハートレスはハートレスは前からここにいたのかいや、最近になって現れたんだ。そういえばそのハートレスが現れたのとみんながいなくなった時期は一致するな。It looks so good, too. Holy shit, this fucking world looks so good. あれかなあれですねどれアンディたちが着れたちにもあの黒いモヤモヤと一緒にお前たちのようなフードのついた黒い格好をしたやつが現れた黒いフードそれってまさか救済機関知ってるやつなのか ここで起こってる異変の原因がわかるかもしれない俺たちに任せてくれないかいやソラたちだけには任せられないえみんながいなくなった原因がわかるならオレたちの問題でもあるむしろ力を貸してくれあっそれでその黒コートはどこにグソ
偵察隊からの報告はターゲットが最後に確認されたのはギャラクシートイズです How will you get to go to Pizza Planet? 新しいおもちゃだな案内するよ窓からやれ The Galaxy of Toys Oh! <laughs> you get Woody and Buzz on your team! Oh, you got- There's four partners with you! Oh my god Buzz and Woody are fighting with you. That is amazing. <laughs> what? What? He's got a hammer. <laughs> uh. Oh my god, sorry, you're overpowered. <laughs> he's got he's got like a giant doom fist. <laughs> what? Damn, you can wreck the big bodies like nothing now with that. Oh shit, we're in Al's toy barn! <laughs> What Transformers? <laughs> this fucking world is amazing. <laughs> you can like swap between them too. Oh my god. We Titan fall now, yeah. Come on! <laughs> this is so hype. Ah, oh, it's young Zayanart. Let's go! <laughs> oh my god, it's finally happening. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. Let's go. To discuss this announcement, please welcome from Pixar Animation Studios, Jason Katz, Story Super I can't believe it. My dreams. My dreams are coming true with this game. Toy Story. That is that's amazing. I was so hyped for that. I can't. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> the toy soldiers. I'm willing to bet they'll delay. Yeah, probably. The situation has changed! Soldiers, hold your position! <laughs> Who's the leader of this outfit? That was a basic question. Now, is your pole string broken? Do you need batteries? For the love of Malibu Barbie, this unit is not ready for playtime. Agreed! Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Do those guys usually come out when you guys come out? Uh, are, always. Are they, are they, are they friends of yours? <laughs> we just met backstage. <laughs> They're very scary. I didn't know they were coming out. That was kind of... I got scared for a minute. So... That's that's a pretty shocking announcement to have Pixar be part of the Kingdom Hearts universe. Yeah. I don't think any of us expected that. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh... So, Jason, can you tell us a small bit about what I got chills. I got Pixar freaking chills. Like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I've been lucky enough to work at Pixar for 23 years uh, in the story department. Uh, I started when I was five. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, uh, but I was in the story department for Toy Story. Oh, it looks so good. Uh, it's like, it looks just uh, like uh, the movie. For Toy Story 3. And 
<laughs> so Buzz and Woody have been in my life for half my life. And I remember the very first meeting. Uh, yes, it's the first time Pixar's in a Kingdom Hearts Cable game, yes. about the idea of bringing Buzz and Woody and the gang uh, into the world of Kingdom Hearts. And it, it was so exciting, and we were so uh, enthusiastic about the promise and uh, the amazing game we could make. <laughs> I, I think everybody else is enthusiastic about it as well. I feel like I need an inhaler. Like, I need yeah, more oxygen. That was, that was a lot to take. It was a lot. Talking, you're a diehard Kingdom Hearts fan, correct? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I'm really excited to work on this project because I've been a gamer all my life. Yeah. And I'm a huge RPG nerd and love the Kingdom Hearts series. Mm -hmm. And I've also worked at Pixar for a long time and animated on Toy Story 2. Well, no big deal. So, <laughs> these characters are very important to me, and it is just really. They kind of look kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Goofy yeah. suits kind of. Yeah, but I can I can learn I can live with it. With the art style, creative direction, and animation even. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, one of my favorite things to work on was um, helping to design the toy versions of Sora Donald. It looks so good. It looks they so look good. really good. And um, <laughs> that cosplay is gonna be crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and yeah. um, the uh, <laughs> the Keyblade. Um, as a gamer, I love collecting all the different Keyblades from all the different worlds. And See, I uh, knew the Buzz Lightyear ride, the Toy Story full motion, or the attraction ride, I hope I can was for Toy Story. I had, I just knew it. I had, I had a feeling it was going to be. <laughs> so, Jason, you mentioned that you worked a lot, very heavily in the story department. So, can you tell us a bit about the original story you're bringing to Kingdom Hearts with Pixar? Yeah, I, I mean, to me, that's the coolest thing. Is is for the game. This is a brand new story. It exists only in Kingdom Hearts 3, and uh, numero san and, and his brilliance was able to pitch something that we loved, and John Lasseter has been involved from the first day. Uh, and John cool. loves this. Uh, John is so into it, and that first meeting where we, we decided, yes, we gotta do it, uh, <clears throat> he looked at us all around the table and uh, square in the eyes and said, make it good. <laughs> So like, yes. No, no pressure. Uh, but I, I really feel like this thing is something that we are all very proud of, so excited to be a part of, and can't wait for you guys to see yourselves. Oh, man, a brand new Toy Story story. That's, that's a lot of stories, but that's incredible, yeah. right? So it's got to be in between two and three, I'm yes. assuming. Come on, that's good. That's in Andy's room. Wow. Uh, Nomura-san, in closing, do you have anything else to add? あの、トイストーリーについて。まあ、はい。そうですね。あの、トイストーリーについて、そうですか。あの、ま、最終言葉に <laughs> He's uh, always hoped that Toy Story would be part of the Kingdom Hearts series, and um, it's almost like my dream came true. And I hope that you know I'm happy, and I hope that the fans are also happy. Oh, I am. <laughs> I'm so hy hyped that Toy Story's in there. Well done. Should he have a final, some final words? Yes, please. Yes, please. What do you What do you got, Nomura? あ、何を言うの?最終メッセージとかファンに何か。えっと、そうですね。あれ。例えばトレーラー。あ、そうとか。すいません。忘れました。えっとですね。あの、オーケストラの時と同じく日本語版と英語版両バージョン、あのプレイ部分が入ってますので、え、2種類この後アップされます。で、冒頭ちょっとあの文字演出が入ってたと思うんですけども、あの部分もえ、ちょっと見づ
Well, his first point is that we will be uploading both the Japanese and English version of the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers that you saw today. Uh, the short Hercules version with no text overlay, as well as the full Toy Story trailer. Uh, one thing he noted was cool. the language displays are slightly different amongst the regions, so please try seeing the various trailers. Yes. Yes. ずっと隠してたのがちょっと一安心してですね。また次の情報、また喜んでいただけるものを公開できるようにまた考えてますので、お楽しみにしていてください。So it's been 18 years of Toy Story, and he's really excited that we're here today. Um, he also said he's thinking about the next announcement, um, so please wait for that as well. Hmm. I wonder what that is. Yeah, that's really and in final closing, to commemorate today's special announcement, he's giving posters to everybody in this room. Oh, damn it, I want one. Oh, oh there's a bat. There's a bat. That, that's a uh, Unchained Key medal. Oh, man. Incredible. Oh, dude, I want one. <laughs> if you play Kingdom Hearts Un Union Cross, you get a special in-game medal from now for quite some time. Cool. I'm going to go get that right now. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. This has been an incredible experience. Thank you. And thank you so much for today. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm happy. <laughs> we got a release here. We got Toy Story. Playtime is a go. go. The fuck? <laughs> that better, you know what? This song better be the, um, like when you're running around the world. <laughs> if it's not, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> Good thing we're halfway through 2017, am I right? Yeah. I'm so happy we got a release here. Hey! Twenty eighteen, no way. I I can't believe that. I thought it was gonna be like twenty nineteen. So Kingdom Hearts three, honestly. How about that? But when exactly, who knows in twenty eighteen. So that was probably fall. Fantastic. All you guys. Thank you, thank you so much. I wanna start by thanking our fantastic hosts, Jack Septic Eye and Strawberry Seventeen. And to our, our partners at Square Enix, Insomniac Games, EA, Oculus, and Sanzoro, thank you guys so much. And a very big thank you to our special guest, Markiplier. Janina Gavinkar, thank you so much. And John Boyega, thank you all. And of course, to all of our Disney and Marvel panelists and all those who work behind the scenes to put this all together. Thank you, thank you. Now. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I announced it was good you enough. I just saw our game slate has something new and exciting for all of our fans, whether you love Disney, Pixar, Marvel, or Star Wars, or of course, all of the above. There's so much to look forward to. And I want to close out by once again, thanking all of you. You are the reason why we're all here and why we strive each and every day to bring our incredible stories and characters to life in new and interactive ways. And so on behalf of everyone at Disney Consumer Products and Interactive Media, thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of D23. Have a great weekend. All right, well, that was worth saving till the end. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? Before we conclude this, we gotta see the trailer one more time. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up here. See if I can find it. Um, yeah, here we go. Awesome. I will pop this out here. I just wanna, I just wanna recap the, uh, the footage one more time here. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, so let's uh, get rid of that. So let me just see this one last time here. Let's see this one more time. I know they're uploading it later, but I gotta see it one more time. Which won't have this text all over it. But as you can see, we got nobodies in there now. Awesome. They look good. <laughs> they looking good. That move looks cool too. That guy looks rad. Disney wins E3 2018. If they even have a panel. I gotta hear that reaction if they hear it. Oh, you don't hear it. Oh man, someone's gotta be filming it just to hear the reaction. And... My god, it looks so, it looks so good too. I wonder if the uh, the English trailer will have actual VA, or it'll be like this. I'm assuming it'll be like this. So safe bet we get an actual release date at D23 in November. Probably, you know what? I'm thinking it probably won't that date. The actual date probably won't be till around the end of the year, or maybe like early next year. Toys? Should they never have those masks in your shoes? Those are the heartless. The bad guys? Have they been around, from here around here? No, they recent, well, showed up recently. Hmm. They should have... If they get the actual, like, English VAs for uh, Buzz and Woody and all of them, that's even gonna be better. I mean, if they get if they can get James freaking Woods for Hades, I'm sure they can get Tom Hanks and uh, Tim Allen. Yeah, it looks like legit, like a Pixar film. I'm so happy that this is in this game. I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> みんながいなくなった原因がわかるなら俺たちの問題でもあるむしろ力を貸してくれあそれでそのクロコートはどこにグソ偵察隊からの報告はターゲットが最後に確認されたのはギャラクシートイズですあ、it's Oh my god. <laughs> the fact that you get like four partners now is absolutely insane. You don't even have to switch out your partners. They're all just there. That's amazing. See what he's at? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he was like... <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and he's got like Thor's hammer with like a rocket ship on it. <laughs> So cool. And he's got like Doomfist. Get some Overwatch in there. Doomfist. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nice, nice. And I thought at first this was Al's Toy Barn, but no, it's Galaxy Toys. And then the fact that you can just go into freaking Titanfall out of nowhere. We Titanfall now. <laughs> the, 
I'm so excited for that move, like the whole, like, you're diving and then you, like, smash down into the ground. Or Amy's hammer. Yeah, yeah, that too. Woohoo! Oh, man. Wow, did you see that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back for a second. You can, sh you can destroy, like, the scenery. Like, look, look, look. Watch in the background there for a second. When he gets into this... Watch the background when he's shooting. Like, watch, uh, watch in behind, like, the, the statue in the back there. He knocked it down! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, you can be D.Va in this game, yeah. I hope Pizza Planet is part of the game. That'd be awesome. <laughs> is this easy mode? <laughs> oh my god. And let's see that date one more time. Mm. Game set and match 2018. Ah, oh, so good. I can't wait till actually it comes out. So I can watch like an actual HD version of it, but holy hell, I'm excited. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. Alright guys, so uh, I think with that note, we're gonna we're gonna end it here. So thanks everybody for coming by to watch the D23 uh, event. It was pretty awesome. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Disney wins D23. Yep, they they won D23. <laughs> I, I guess if that makes any sense, but yeah. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, it was awesome, especially that Kingdom Hearts stuff, it was worth it. That was worth waiting for. <laughs> Took a little bit to get there, but honestly, once it showed up, that was worth it. That was worth seeing. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but anyways, guys, we'll be back here later tonight, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to be starting uh, Rayman Origins here. So, yeah, hope to see you all then. It should be freaking awesome. So, yeah, um, it was fun. So, I'm going to upload my reactions to the Kingdom Hearts stuff to YouTube. So, yeah. Um, expect that going up on the main YouTube channel a little bit here. So, anyways, yeah. So, with that being said, thanks for those for watching and uh, hanging out with me. It was awesome, and we'll see you all next time. So, until then, take care. Bye bye. <laughs>